Hi, Roger Abbott and Don Ferguson from the Royal Canadian Air Force for the Developing Countries Farm Radio Network. This nonprofit organization collects practical, down to earth advice from farmers and farming experts throughout the developing world. The information is converted into radio scripts and distributed to 700 broadcasters, teachers, and other participants in 110 countries. And reaches 150 million third world farmers every month. That's even more than Air Force. So there were various occasions on which uh, I was uh, given a, a trip to go somewhere to do something special related to farm broadcasting and my job at CBC. One of them was to uh, Africa. I was seconded by the, um, the Commonwealth Broadcasting Association to go to Africa uh, to work in a workshop for farm broadcasters. And um, um, along with me, there was a man, a Dr. Pradeep Day, D-E-Y, from All India Radio. That was the national, uh, it still is, the national broadcasting system of India. And from the BBC. So the, the, the first was Pradeep Day, and then there was Michael Pickstock from Britain. And he's uh, one of the top farm broadcasters in Britain. And then I, uh, we all met in, <laughs> in the airport in London, in Heathrow, on our way to Zambia. The uh, workshop was held at the University of Zambia, and uh, the Zambia Broadcasting Corporation's uh, studios, where we did some practical work. Uh, and and the, the people who attended that workshop were from all of the Commonwealth countries in, in Africa. And as you see in the picture, uh, this was the whole group all sort of standing together in front of ZBC's uh, headquarters building. One of the things we did at that workshop was to um, get our broadcasters, these are all broadcasters to farm, uh, one from every country, as I said, a Commonwealth country. So we'd get them crowded into a little bus that we had, and, and indeed the bus was so, uh, so crowded, it, it even had little seats that went down in the aisle. So that, uh, and I recall um, sitting there uh, with uh, one man to my right, he was Oye Woli Aaronly, his name was, from Nigeria. And then on my other side, I was sitting, he was on the window side, I was here next to him, and then jammed right next to me in the little aisle seat was uh, Abdul Sese from uh, Sierra Leone. So here were these two fellows, and, and they were all jammed together as tight as you could be. And, uh, and so we were out on this bus trip to go out to a, a, an experimental farm, a demonstration farm. It, it, it was really quite a trip, let me tell you. And we were jostling back and forth. So anyway, I said to, um, uh, to uh, Oya Woli, I said, tell me now, what, what kind of information do you tell your, your farmers? And, uh, and Oya Woli, uh, he's a Nigerian, and, and uh, they, they wear, have a, a national dress, and they, they have a hat and everything, all that's kind of flowing. And so um, I, say, I said, what, what do you tell your farmers? And he said, we, we talk about all sorts of modern a a agriculture, like fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, and, and, and all those modern things of farming. And then I said to Abdul, um, now, uh, what was the last program you did before you came on this workshop? Well, he said, he said I talked about, told farmers how, how to clean and adjust spark plugs on their tractors. And uh, I said, oh, oh, I said, uh, well, how many farmers in Sierra Leone have tractors? Well, he said, about one in 80,000. And uh, I said, well, uh, I said, how big an audience do you have? Oh, he said, I've got a big audience. I've got 800,000. And I did a little figuring in my, my head, and I said, you mean you're talking to 10 farmers out of 800,000 farmers about something they, they don't have a tractor? Do they, they don't have tractors? 
and uh, and and then uh, I said to to Oye Woolley, well now look, you're telling them all about all the the modern things of agriculture, fertilizers, pesticides. I said they can't afford these things. Then I said to Abdul, don't you think it would be better for you to talk to your farmers about about using oxen as in spark plugs on tractors? Because if they had if they had uh, uh, an ox, they, they could do their plowing, and and you wouldn't have to be feeding it gasoline, <laughs> and and uh, they'd just be eating the grass, and and it wouldn't cost you anything to uh, to to, uh, uh, to use them. Well, they, he said, well, we just don't have that kind of information. So I said, well, look, and this was where it, when an idea came into my head. If I were to send you information that you could use, uh, for instance, about some, uh, say, making, using animal manure or something about raising oxen, I said, wouldn't, would, and I send it to you in a form that you could use it, uh, uh, say, I could write scripts and, and then you could interpret it in the local language for the farmers you serve. And, uh, and, and this could then be useful, perhaps then. If I were to write that stuff up and make it available to you, would you use it? And they both said, yes, we would. And so there's where the idea of, of the, the, in, in the farm radio network came into focus in my mind. So anyway, that's, where the, that's how it all happened in the beginning. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, when I, um, when I, the first year that we put together uh, a uh, package of scripts, it was in 1979, and uh, on May the 1st, 1979, so that's 30 years ago this year, on May 1st, that's when the first set of packages of scripts went out to 34 broadcasters in 26 countries. And I said, it just mushroomed from there. People started hearing about it. The people who, who got the scripts, they all seemed to be quite happy about it. And, and here was material coming to them, which was, which was useful for their farmers they are talking to. And, and really, I, I just sort of sit back and think, well, it wasn't a bad idea. And now when you consider how many people throughout the world can get the whole story of the different scripts regularly coming to them all over the world on the internet that helps them to increase their food supplies and have better nutrition and health. And after all, if that isn't what's helping people in developing countries, I don't know what is. And when I think of, I just have to pinch myself a little bit now when I think of the people who are helped by this service that's available to them just by turning on their radio. This is the Developing Countries Farm Radio Tape Package Number 1, DCFRN. So the ending of every program that I ever did, I use this ending. Serving agriculture, the basic industry. This is George Atkins. <laughs>